Messenger Theatre Company presents The Dragon. <laughs> Episode 1, Ray. So where to? Ah, sure. We'll get you there safely, not to worry. No dragons in this cab, and it's fireproofed. Won't be long. Is that your girlfriend that saw you to the cab? Oh. Hook up. Like a... Like a one-night stand? No. Wow. Even one-night stands are looking after men now. I would never have thought. <laughs> Used to be the reverse at this hour. You know, men putting their ladies in cars trying to keep them safe. Now we got the reverse. Even for a one-night stand. Wow, what does the world come to? No, oh, yeah, I'm sure I have. I'm sure I've had lots of dragons in here, but I, I just keep my mouth shut when I've got a lady in the cab these days. I don't want to run the risk of saying something stupid, you know. Better to say nothing at all. Don't be lulled into complacency just because they're nice and polite. Because, you know, the nice and polite ones are the dangerous ones. I had one in here a couple of months ago. It was as sweet as could be. She reminded me of my daughter, truth be told. All like, yes, sir, no, sir. Oh, would it be too much trouble? And could you just drop me at the corner? And <laughs> when I let her out, well, she hadn't gone a block when suddenly, the blam, she's a dragon. Yeah, then yeah, she ate up some guy she just passed a moment before. I'm, I'm guessing he you know, made the mistake of telling her to smile or something. I mean, that's a mistake he won't make again, let me tell you. Any mistake. No, well, she licked her dragon lips, yeah, and quick as a blink, she was walking along the street in her high heels, innocent as can be. I mean, if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I'd never have believed it. She turned around, yeah, and she waved at me, too. Yeah, she knew I was watching. I felt like she could like, smell my fear and was just taking it in like somebody like outside of Krispy Kreme when they're making the donuts. <laughs> it's a funny time to be alive, man, I'll tell you. You know, they've got these people collecting stories from the dragons themselves ah, and the reasons for why they're eating someone or setting them on fire. And I mean, I just tell you, it's chilling. Have you seen those? Oh, oh it's, it, it's such little stuff. It's things like uh, taking up too much space on the elevator, interrupting at a meeting, talking too loudly on the phone. I mean, in the beginning, we thought they might be the like vengeance dragons. They ate a lot of rapists and wife beaters and such. But, but it's not just rapists and murderers anymore. Talking too loudly on the phone? Why, if I ate everyone who talked too loudly on the phone, I wouldn't have any customers, would I? I mean, I exaggerate, but, you know, I come to think of it, I mean, I understand the impulse to eat a loud talker. You're not a loud phone talker, are you? Just kidding, man. Don't worry. There aren't any male dragons. I'm not eating anyone. I just drive the taxi and hope I don't get killed, you know? I'm one of the few male drivers left. It's ironic. You know, men feel more comfortable with male drivers and male passengers are the most vulnerable, especially at night, so you'd think we would be in high demand, but... Well, yeah, a lot of them, you know, God rest their souls, they, they got dragging in one way or another. And, and who knew? But, you know, a lot of women were waiting in the wings for those jobs. Yeah, some of the women I work with now, they tell me they'd always wanted to drive a cab, but got shut out whenever they tried to apply, so it's, it's good they're getting a shot now, of course, yeah. I don't think any of them are dragons. I mean, they don't seem the type. I don't know. They're tough, you know, they're direct. 
I don't, I don't hesitate to tell you what's up. The dragon women aren't like that, at least not the ones I've seen. I mean, I have a theory. I mean, it doesn't everyone, but, but yeah, no, I do. I, I think it's like the dragon women spent their whole lives suppressing their reptilian brains and the anger centers and the rage button. You know, I, I'm not a brain guy, I know, but whatever the technical terms are. They suppressed them, and they got all hardened up into that dragon egg gene, and then poof! What? They are two beings, the dragon and the woman. And the women don't always recall what happened when they were dragons. It's like the dragon brain takes over and does its business and then fades as soon as the moment is passed. That's why it's the nice, sweet ones that flip, because they never learn to stomp their feet or whatever. Now, one of the ways to protect yourself if you're with one is to just let yourself be afraid. Like, the way to avoid them turning into dragons and eating or inflaming you is to just lean into your fear. Because in their woman forms, they, they, they eat it then. What's not to understand? They eat your fear, and that is enough to sate the dragon. The, the woman senses your fear, right? She feels it, smells it, sees it. I don't know. She, she won't transform because she's full. See? She doesn't need lunch because she's already ate. Because let me tell you, buddy, once she's a dragon, oh, there's nothing you can do to stop what's about to happen to you. Dragon won't be reasoned with. Dragon doesn't even understand words. It just sees that dumbass that called it forth and eats him. That's it. But if you're afraid, man, that's good. Because scared ones are rarely consumed. Oh, very quickly. You'll never see it with the naked eye. One minute, you're looking at a nice lady sipping on a lemonade. You blink. And suddenly, there's a dragon sitting there. Of course someone's got it on camera. This is the great age of the image. You know, they, they filmed it and slowed it down and watched every element of the transformation. Well, a fine mist comes out of the woman's nose and then envelops her in a bubble. The bubble becomes dragon-shaped and then solidifies into a fully dragon-shaped creature. Well, sure, of course they tried that. But if you hold the nose when the dragon wants to come out, it'll just come out of the mouth. You know, if you cover them both, dragon comes out from the ears, and so on, and so on, and so forth. When the dragon wants out, the dragon gets out. There's no stopping it. There were some funny videos. I mean, no, I mean, funny maybe isn't the right word, but viral. There were some viral videos of women in meetings with nose clips on trying to control it. And the astonishment when the dragon emerges from the mouth instead, right? It was hilarious, right? Right before the carnage, of course. Well, of course they're studying it. What do you think? We're just cavemen accepting our fate here? Some of the greatest scientists in the world are collaborating, trying to get to the bottom of it. It's just that it came on so suddenly. There's no foundational science, you know. It's not as if there were dragonologists uh, sitting around waiting for the dragoning. There are no studies of dragons. There are no precedents for this kind of transformation. I mean, the closest we can come is, is the butterfly. And certainly there are a lot of butterfly experts on the case, but again, there's no precedent. So all these people who were used to working slowly and quietly in the academic halls are suddenly working under very serious pressure. What? Well, we all are now, man. We all know the ins and outs, how much progress has been made or not made. The news is nothing but... And our survival depends on keeping aware. Well, you know, I, I won't ride in the subway car of all women. You know, men stick together when we can. We watch what we say. I learned to modulate my voice. I used to be a real loud talker. I mean, my sister would tell you. I was one of those you'd hear over anyone, but no more. That is a surefire way to be burned to a crisp. 
Hotel Davina, yes? Ah, well, here we are, my man. Well, thank you, sir. Brent, great. Nice to meet you, and thank you. Now, you be careful getting out. Give a wave to the doorman. He'll look out for you. Here's my card. Here's my card. Yeah, you just give me a call if you need to go anywhere else. Huh? And say hi to Willie for me. Tell him Ray says hello and to keep it cool. I mean, he'll tell you some stories, let me tell you. Uh, oh, Willie used to work over at the police station in the missing persons unit. He was there in the first flush of the dragoning. And it was just like, wow, an avalanche of paperwork, he said. Well, I mean, he'll tell you. He's just right there at the door. I should let you get inside. Be safe. Have a good night, my man. Call Ray if you need a safe ride. The Dragoning was produced by Messenger Theatre Company and written by Emily Rainbow Davis. The Dragoning theme was composed by Scott Ethier. Our sound designer is Matt Powell, and our sound doula is Rick Sholwen. Ray was played and sound designed by Ned Massey. To hear future episodes of The Dragoning, please contribute to our Indiegogo campaign. The link is in the show notes. Messenger Theatre Company is a not-for-profit organization, and we are entirely reliant on your support. Please like, review, and subscribe in whatever podcast app you happen to be listening to us on. Thank you in advance for making our next episode possible. Stay safe out there, everyone, and watch out for dragons. <laughs>